excited, looking forward to it. It's been a strange environment in one way. We started term in October and it was all the focus on one race and everything else in between is a warm-up really. So the fact it's two little bit days away is nerve-wracking but exciting at the same time. And when you went back to university, was this something you had, uh, was it something that you decided to do quite quickly when, or was it kind of, you know, what made you want to go back into it again? And Well, I think the, you know, the, the course I went, you know, primarily I went back to, to study to, for the course I'm doing and I could have done the course in London or in Cambridge, uh, applied to, to both and then got into Cambridge, which was my preferred option you know, for academically, but then going there and the chance of the boat race was too big to to resist and you know, for the first month I was struggling to get on top of the course and row and then I thought well, if, if one's going to give it I have to do the rowing but I managed to get on top of both luckily. That's brilliant and Dara was just saying he was a little bit concerned at first about your fitness levels <laughs> <laughs> so um, were you concerned? I was it's strange. I wasn't concerned about my fitness level I was really concerned about strength I mean the, you know, I've done lots of endurance events, marathons, and you know, I've kept myself you know, very aerobically fit, which is you know, heart and lungs. But strength-wise, we used to do, when I was training properly, you'd, you'd do five days weight training a week, and I'd probably done five days a year of weight training. And, and so my strength you know, was, was well down, and, and that took a while to, to get up and, and try to combine, you know, relearning weights, relearning how to row, and relearning how to study. You know, last time I was at school, there was, at university, there was no internet. So that's, you know, I was playing catch-up on a number of levels, and uh, the, luckily the race wasn't in December otherwise I wouldn't have been in the boat but you, know, you have your, your target and you're here and luckily I made it towards there uh, I've got in in time and you're of good pedigree but does it hurt now? I think the, the reality is that no matter how fit you are or how strong you are it hurts the same the, reality, the, the good thing is that if you're fitter and stronger you go faster uh, it's, it hurts as much as if anyone went and, and rode or ran as hard as they could, it's going to hurt. But the, the reason you train is to make sure it's just a bit quicker. Absolutely. And the, and the trials, what was that like going through the trials, the selection process? Was it, was it tough? It is tough. And it, it's tough, especially you know, in this environment where you know, you're, you're with the guys you know, morning and evening and then everyone's going through the studying as well and living in the same, in the same place. It is cutthroat. And a game of very, you know, aggressive is the wrong word, but committed musical chairs in that you're competing against mates you've made who are going through the same thing as you and, and there's only one boat you want to be in and, and it, is, it is a hard process but at the same time you've got to be ruthless because we've got to be ruthless on Sunday and, and you get to a situation where you've got complete trust in the guys in the boat. And how are you feeling about Sunday? Hopeful? It's, it's a strange environment. I mean, if, if this video was filmed during the week of the Olympics, we would have had the heat and the semi-final at this stage. So you would know who your opposition was in the final, you'd know whether you would want a place in the final, and you'd, you'd have a gauge as to if you need to tinker with your race plan. Whereas now, we, we obviously know the crew of the final, but we don't know how fast they are, we don't know how fast we are. And so we've got to have absolute confidence in us, and and our race plan and, and believe that we can, we can beat them and, and they've got to have the same to us. So it's a very different environment and luckily there's some guys in our boat who've been through it before and I've got experience from other things and you've got guys who are you know, 19 who's their first big event. So we all use their enthusiasm, we use our experience and hopefully we'll sort of get to a place where uh, none of us drop our shopping on Sunday. That sounds brilliant. And uh, James, when they found out James Cracknell was going to be on our team, I bet when they first met you, could, were they a bit overwhelmed and excited or did they play it very cool? Well, I think Dara summed it up very well in that uh, I think there was definitely respect for, you know, I guess, my track record in, in rowing and that kind of disappeared after the first week when they realised that, yeah, the record was, was, was good, but it was a while ago. That's brilliant. And James, one other thing, 2010 you had the injury. What would your neurologist say about you coming back to this race and rowing now? I think it would be twofold that he would have, if I'd sat down and said, look, I want to go to, to Cambridge, do a Masters and run the boat race, they'd have gone, right, you need to set your targets slightly differently. Um, and that's, that's what I think anyone who has a setback of any kind, you know, whether it's a 
uh, head injury or another physical injury or bankruptcy or whatever, if, as long as you reset your your target and you define it, then you've got every chance of achieving it. If you listen to people who say you can't do it, then you're never going to. That's brilliant, James. Thank you very much. Thank you.